Artificial intelligence has taken the world by storm in the last year. With the release of groundbreaking technologies like chat, GPT, and stable diffusion, it feels like we're entering a brave new world that will never be the same. But what about blockchain? Where does that fit into the mix? Well, I'm here to tell you, in this new world of AI, blockchains are now more necessary than ever. And there are many aspects of artificial intelligence technology that are unlocking new use cases for blockchain in the next coming months and years. And I want to connect the dots for you and break all that down this video today You know, as a blockchain developer myself who works this technology on a daily basis. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to get ahead of this next AI and blockchain wave that's getting started right now, then I can share to break into the blockchain industry and increase your salary well past 100K over at adaptiversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, so let's jump into this. Let's talk about how artificial intelligence has changed the world and how blockchains can help us adapt to this new world. So in case you've been living under a rock over the last year, AI has gotten scary good. Just try going to ChatGPT and ask it to code out a basic app for you. It can do it pretty fast. In fact, I just released a video last month doing exactly that creating an entire blockchain application from scratch with ChatGPT in just 20 minutes. Or try getting on Stable Diffusion and creating insanely photorealistic images of people that don't even exist. The possibilities seem endless, but if you're looking around, you also see the possibility to create representations of people who do actually exist, doing or saying things they've never done before. Like just the other day, I was watching this YouTube video of a song that was made entirely with Kanye West's voice, but Kanye was never on the track at all. Basically what happened was, he created a background track and then recorded his own voice over the top of it and then use a plugin powered by AI to turn his voice into Kanye's voice. And now you have a brand new musical production that sounds like Kanye, but he's nowhere in the mix. And this obviously has all kinds of implications like should Kanye get streaming royalties for this performance? Are artists going to get cut out of doing guest appearances on tracks? Like why would you hire some famous rapper to come on to a track if you had a shoestring budget? Are we going to get all kinds of posthumous releases from deceased artists? And I was even watching this YouTube video the other day on Rick Beato's channel talking about using artists who are living but who have age doing a performance and then basically overdubbing it with an AI version of their younger self. So the example he used in his video is basically taking a Paul McCartney song with McCartney's current voice, which may lost a little bit of its youthfulness, and then superimposing Paul McCartney's younger voice to enhance the performance. And it's absolutely crazy how this sounds. Now, to the discerning ear, you can usually tell that it's not exactly the original person doing it, but this technology is currently as bad as it's ever going to be. It's only going to get better from here. And so what happens when it gets so good that it's actually tricking people that it is the artist themselves? And what happens when we don't know if what you're seeing on your screen was actually created by this person in the first place or somebody just made it up? And now this is already murky when you're talking about the domain of you know, celebrities and artists who are creating, you know, artworks. And, you know, I have an artistic background. As a musician, I have a very high view of the arts. But this becomes way more consequential when you take it to another domain. Like what happens when this becomes way more consequential with, you know, world leaders doing or saying things that they never did or said. And it gets even worse when you start throwing video into the mix. Like take this, for example, I saw this YouTube channel pop up. It's the Joe Rogan AI experience. Okay. There's a few episodes on here, but basically it's people scripting Joe Rogan podcast interviews that never happened. Joe never said any of these things and his guests never said any of these things. And episode number two is an interview with Donald Trump. And so just start thinking what's possible whenever you have believable AI audio recordings of people like Donald Trump talking. Or what about this YouTube video where Kevin basically created his own voiceover and used an AI plugin to make it sound like Joe Biden himself. You know, obviously both of these examples I'm showing you here are just kind of demonstrating what's possible with the technology itself. They're not used for any type of nefarious purposes. But what happens if this technology gets in the hands of bad actors who can use this technology to spread video of, let's say, a sitting president, for example, doing or saying something they didn't actually do? Or what if they use it on a prominent presidential candidate to try to influence the outcome of election inside the United States? This is undoubtedly a huge problem created by AI, and it's going to get harder and harder to even know what's real in the future. So that's the big problem deep fakes with AI. But what's the solution? Well, that's where blockchain comes into the picture. So let me show you how. Well, right now, blockchains currently have the ability to do something that most people don't even recognize in the first place. Okay, so typically people are using their crypto wallets to do things like send money around or buy and sell different cryptocurrencies or maybe, you know, swap NFTs and collect them into their wallet. But the cryptographic technology that enables these things also holds the key to solving this problem with AI. 
So let me show you what I mean. So anytime you're doing any of these things, like, you know, sending cryptocurrency around or swapping them, you're able to do this because of digital signatures that are generated by your private key that's associated with your wallet. So let's use the use case of just sending cryptocurrency from my wallet to yours. If I was going to do that and get out my MetaMask and click that little send button, what you're doing is you're creating a digital signature, their private key that essentially says, you know, yes, I authorize this transaction to take funds out of my wallet and send it to this person's wallet. And whenever you do that, you submit that transaction to the blockchain, use your digital signature, you know, created by your private key, and the blockchain understands that you are doing that. And then the blockchain processes that transfer and it moves the money out of your account into somebody else's. And so in order to create this digital signature, what you're doing is you're essentially signing a message with your private key, which works kind of like your password or your digital fingerprint in this case. And that private key has the ability to create really any arbitrary digital signature that you want to. You can put any type of arbitrary data on chain and prove that you submitted that data. And so you can see examples of that here on chain. If you just go to etherscan.io forward slash verified signatures, you can see examples of people, you know, putting in arbitrary messages and signing them and verifying them with their crypto wallets on Etherscan. So for example, you could create a message that says, you know, hi, I'm Joe and I live at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. And you can sign that with your crypto wallet to prove that you sent that message. And you can even create a transaction and submit that data to the blockchain in a data field so that it would live there forever. So this is a super powerful technique that proves that you authorized a message that was put out there online. And you can pair this with any type of media that was created and put out there online. You know, you could just sign it with the digital private key that says, you know, hey, I'm Donald and I approve this message. And then you can include a link to that published media out there. And this could be used as an authentication technique for any media that gets published online. So let me kind of give you a concrete great example of how you could put all this stuff together. So let's say that you have an official statement put out by an influential person, whether it's the president of the United States or just a famous artist like Kanye West, for example. So what you would do is this person could basically get a crypto wallet, okay, that everybody knows actually belongs to them. I've just got an example here of like Vitalik Buterin's uh, Ethereum wallet here for the Vitalik.eth. Everybody knows this is Vitalik. And so this could kind of be like your universal blue check mark across any social media platform. It doesn't have to be Twitter. It could extend to anywhere this media is published online. And so whenever you have this official media that wants to get put out there, what you would first do before it goes onto any social platform is publish that media to a decentralized file store system like IPFS, okay? And then you would essentially get that IPFS hash back and then that user with their official wallet would create a transaction that basically says, you know, hey, we're publishing this official media on chain. Here's the original thing. So if it ever gets edited, if it ever gets doctored, this is what we intended to publish. And you can verify that we did it and we approve this message and it's going to get associated with our private key. And then you publish that on chain and then anybody can go back to the source and see what the actual original media was that was put out by this person completely authorized. And then any platform this gets published to, whether it's YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, doesn't matter, could essentially take a reference to this transaction hash, this digital signature, and include it in the description of the media so that you could see the original one. You could also do things like embed QR codes into the media, whether it's a, with a picture you know, on the video itself, like a watermark or a audio encoded QR code that anybody could scan to see the link to the original thing. And worst case scenario, that stuff gets edited out or maybe you can't put it in the description. You could always just say, hey, I saw this official state for this person. Is that included in their official publication wallet? And you could just go check the chain to see if it's there. And if it's not, you have a pretty good reason to be skeptical of whether that thing is even real or not. And that could be a huge win to basically say, hey, was this real or was it not real? Just go check the chain. Now, it can make this problem dramatically better. What it won't do is really give you any benefit if something's published and they try to re- retroactively dispute it, but it will give you the benefit of saying, hey, we're going to put this message out in the world. We approve exactly what's in here. Here's the original copy and we're going to publish it to the chain. But either way you slice it, this is a huge win really for the whole concept of decentralized identity. Okay, That's not a completely new concept. We've been talking about decentralized identity for a really long time, and we started to see that use case slowly start to take out with blockchain. What's really important to understand here is that essentially the presence of AI could really accelerate the need for decentralized identity and could wake the entire world up to why blockchain is even important in the first place. And that could actually unlock a lot of other use cases for decentralized identity. I'm just going to go ahead and coin a term in this video, decentralized identity management or DIM, okay? 
I'll let you all help me try to spread that around. And if that actually takes off as a keyword in people's minds, and we can always point back to this YouTube video and you all can be taking some of the credit for, you know, making that a thing. And if in fact, this really does accelerate that need and, and wake people up to it, and there's all kinds of other benefits that we can get out of blockchain and decentralized identity management, some of which I've talked about on this channel. But just a quick recap, you know, what can we do with decentralized identity management in the future? There's definitely some low hanging fruit that's solving needs that people are probably already aware of. I made a video talking about this recently with like the Taylor Swift concerts that have been happening. This started last fall where essentially Taylor Swift concert tickets were just completely bought up by bots in the first place. But one of the benefits of decentralized identity is that you can prove that you are a unique human, okay? That's some low-hanging fruit that you can accomplish with this, where basically you give fans a fair chance to purchase tickets if they have a crypto wallet that has some reputation associated with it that gets a lot harder for bots to just buy it out before true fans actually get the chance. But there's all these other bigger use cases you know, which can eventually flourish and thrive as we solve some key problems associated with this blockchain. For example, you know, lending. So, you know, there's no reason that we can't have credit scores or some type of on-chain financial reputation like credit scores over time that can facilitate under collateralized lending. So we have savings lending apps right now on the blockchain with DeFi, but they're all over collateralized. You have to put down more money that you're actually borrowing. But in the future, you could do a type of situation like where you are financing a home or a car where you put down a down payment that's less than the total value of the asset, provided that you have some type of decentralized reputation on chain. But we need a key decentralized identity element before that can really take off. There's so many other things like, you know, keeping your university credentials on chain to prove that you have some type of education, or maybe it's even like your driver's license or your pilot's license to prove that you're able to operate that type of vehicle, or even doing things just like proving that you are a certain age so that you can purchase or access age-restricted goods and services online. And that's a short list of where decentralized identity management or DIM can go in the future. And AI and the need to prove that people are uniquely human and authorize certain messages could be a catalyst to explode these other use cases, but because the rest of the world is actually waking up to them. Sort of in a similar way to where, you know, cryptocurrency speculation and crypto prices going up woke up a lot of the world for decentralized finance or DeFi and what's possible with that. In a similar way, this could wake up a lot of people to the power of decentralized identity management. Now, I definitely think this is going to push blockchain forward in a big way. And so, you know, how can you get ahead of this next wave? So, you know, right now is the best time to double down on your skills and become a highly paid blockchain developer so that you can work with these exciting new technologies. You can work remotely. You can increase your salary in a big way. And so how can you take action on that today right after finishing watching this video? Well, that's exactly what I help you do in this channel. So you can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find those free courses there. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those videos and you went to the next step or, hey, maybe you want to take a master shortcut entirely, I should have become a blockchain master step-by-step -step start to finish breaking the blockchain industry, you know, increase your salary well past 100K over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You really don't have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I got for today. Make sure you smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. That really helps these videos out so that more people can learn about blockchain. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.